Hi guys and welcome to this video. Now, sorry it's been a little while since my last video, but I've been away from my computer due to my summer vacation. But I'm back now and ready to start getting out some really interesting videos. Well, hopefully they're going to be interesting. And in this video, we're going to be looking at VM performance on multi-CPU systems and Threadripper systems. Because recently, I got my hands on a Threadripper 2990WX 32-core CPU, upgrading from my previous 1950X that I was using before. Now, I'm not going to go into much detail about the 2990WX in this video, as I'll be going into detail about that in the upcoming 2990WX Unraid server video. But basically, the Threadripper CPUs have some similarity with multi-CPU systems. Why? Well, what AMD have done with Threadripper CPUs is rather than making a single chip with every single CPU core on it, AMD connects either two or four dies together using its high speed Infinity Fabric. So because of this fact, it makes them similar to multi-CPU systems. Now in this diagram, we can see the 2990WX CPU's topology taken from AMD's official documentation. And we can see here that only two of the dies actually have memory controllers and only two of the dies connect directly to the PCI Express lanes. So this is similar to a multi-CPU system. A dual CPU system, each CPU will connect to its own memory and each CPU will connect to different PCIe devices. So let's think of a gaming VM. We want to use the corresponding cores from either, in the case of Threadripper, the same die, and in the case of a multi-CPU system, the same CPU as is directly connected to the graphics card that we're going to be passing through. So how do we know what device connects to which die or which CPU? And how do we know on the Unraid web UI which cores are on which die or which CPU? Well, luckily, we can use some software that can create a diagram showing us exactly this. And then from that, we can work out the best way to use the resources that our server has for maximum VM performance. So we're going to use something called HWLock, short for Hardware Locality. And after installing this, we're going to run a command called LSTOPO. But before we can go running this command, we're going to have to install HWLock and multiple dependencies that it needs. Now, some of you out there may not know that Unraid is actually based on Slackware Linux. So we can actually install Slackware packages onto Unraid to give it a bit of extra functionality. And we can install these packages from the command line, or the easy way is to create a folder on the flash drive called Extra and put the packages in there, and then they're installed when the server boots. However, to make things a bit easier, I've made a script, which you'll find in the description, which will download hwlock and all of its dependencies. And there's also a second script, which is an uninstall script, so we can remove all the packages when we're done with them. So let's install the script and get the topology for our server. So once you've downloaded these two files from the description, just open them with a the proper text editor. I'm using TextMate on OS X here, but if you're using Windows, then use Notepad++. So let's copy everything there is here onto the clipboard, then open up the Unraid web UI, and so once here, let's click onto Apps, and then install Squid's excellent user scripts program, and clicking on the blue arrow here, that will install the plugin, and once it's installed, click onto Settings, and then click on the icon for user scripts in the bottom right hand side. And now we want to click onto the button Add New Script, and give it a name, this one is Install HW Lock. And now we can click on the name of the script for more options and I'm going to edit the description. And after having put in the description, just click onto the green tick to save that. And click back onto the name again and then this time click edit script. And delete everything from in here and then paste in what we copied from the text editor earlier. And then click save changes. So next we want to open the second script in the text editor and copy all of that out. And then we're going to go through exactly the same process to install that second script. Okay, so now with both scripts installed, let's click Run Script on the install HW Lock one, and that will download everything we need and put it in a folder called Extra on the flash drive. 
And then all we need to do to install them is just to reboot the server. So I'm going to do that now. And once your server's rebooted, let's click onto terminal and then we're going to enter the following command. LS topo and then a space. Then we need to choose a location where the ping file is going to go that has the picture of the topology in it. I'm going to put mine in forward slash mnt forward slash user and then my app data folder. But you can choose anywhere you want. And I'm just going to call it topology.png. So once you've done that, just hit enter and it will create the file. So now we can close the terminal window and open the location of where we've just created the file. And for me, that's in my app data. Then you just want to open the ping file and it will show us our topology. And here on the 2990WX, we can see the four dies that make up the CPU with NUMA nodes 0 and 2 containing PCIe connections. And the other two NUMA nodes are the two dies on the CPU which only connect through the Infinity Fabric, not having a direct connection to the board. So let's have a closer look at NUMA node 0 and NUMA node 2, as these are going to be our fastest dies. So on NUMA node 0, we've got the logical CPUs from 0 through to 15. And on NUMA node 2, we've got 16 through to 31. So let's have a look how this is represented in the Unraid VM Manager. So here we can see logical CPU 0 through to 15, and that's NUMA node 0. And NUMA node 2 is logical CPU 16 through to 31, as you can see here. So these are always going to be my fastest calls. So when assigning CPU resources to a VM, unless you need to have more CPU cores than what are available on one NUMA node, always use cores from the same NUMA node to assign to a VM. So now let's have a look at the PCIe devices connected to each NUMA node. So let's shift this diagram across to the left to make a little bit more room. Now on this machine, I've got two graphics cards in the system. I have both the GTX 1050 Ti and the GTX 1080. And here we can see the 1050 Ti. Now what we want to concentrate on is the ID number of the graphics card, this number here in the brackets, which is 10DE colon 1C82. And so now we want to locate the same number in our topology diagram opposite. And here it is. So we know this is the GTX 1050 Ti. Okay, so now let's find the number for the GTX 1080. And here it is here. And this one's ID is 10DE colon 1B80. And we can see that represented on the left here. So we know this is the GTX 1080. So the GTX 1050 Ti is connected to NUMA node 0 and the GTX 1080 is connected to NUMA node 2. So when assigning the GTX 1050 Ti to a VM, I should be using it with logical CPUs from 0 through to 15 and that should give me best performance. And when using a VM with the GTX 1080, I should be using it with NUMA node 2, so I should be pinning it to a VM with logical CPUs from 16 through to 31. So when you have a server with multiple NUMA nodes, then it makes sense to check what the topology is so you can see how to best pin and use your resources. Okay, so once you've made a picture of your server's topology, I think it's best just to remove all of the Slackware packages that we installed earlier. So to do that, we go back to the Unraid Web UI, go to Settings and then User Scripts, and then just run the Remove HW Lock. And again, finally, we just need to reboot the server, and then we're back to where we were before. So that brings us to the end of another video. Hopefully it was interesting for you guys who have multi NUMA node servers and run VMs. Well, it's time for me to go now, but as always I'd like to give a massive thanks to all of my Patreon supporters and just to anyone who takes the time out to watch my videos. Well, the channel has just broken through 10,000 subscribers, so next week there's going to be an announcement for a giveaway with some really nice prizes. Well, if you want to know about that, then please subscribe to the channel and make sure you set the YouTube bell notification so you get notified straight away when I upload the details. Anyway guys, if you like this video then please hit the like button and share it with anyone who you think might find it interesting. Anyway guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.